Thank you very much for that wonderful, gracious introduction. Um, today, I'm sharing with you my story. My story from when I was a little girl and I first learned about astronomy until now. My earliest memory of just astronomy in general was the middle school science fair. I had to do a project. I didn't want to do the solar system. Everybody did the solar system. I had to do something different. So I had heard about this crab nebula. I was like, hmm, hey, my zodiac sign is cancer. I'm a crab. That's what I should do. So my mom, she had, you know, my wonderful mom, she bought me some encyclopedias, and I thought, let me look it up. Let me see what I could find. Couldn't really understand what was going on. But someone at my school said, why don't you go to the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History? Maybe you could find out some information there. So I went there, wandered around, went to the gift shop, and I said, I need to talk to somebody. I need to learn about the Crab Nebula. That's what I want to do for my science fair project. And wouldn't you know, that person got a researcher to come out, meet me, take me into the back room, show me their archives, explain it to me. The Crab Nebula, OK, and of course, I forgot to say I was going to mix a little bit of astronomy here for you, too. Um, the Crab Nebula is a supernova remnant. It is a remnant of a massive star that has exploded, leaves behind a shell of gas which glows due to the energy of that central star, that remnant that's left over. And I was like, wow. So she gave me some great ideas. I did my project. And then I realized, that's what I want to be. I am hooked. This is it. So, I continue on, go on to high school, take all the science classes that I could, loved chemistry, absolutely adored math. I was good at both of those, but then I got to physics. <laughs> physics did not go very well. I mean, it went OK, but not as well as it had for my other classes. So I thought, uh, I don't know about this physics thing. But you know what? My physics teacher, even though I wasn't you know, doing as well as I had previously in other science classes, he believed in me. One day, he came to me and he said, you know, I have something for you. And I thought, oh, he's going to give me an astronomy book. He knows I love astronomy. Wouldn't you know, he gave me a shopping bag full of books. He gave me an amazing pair of binoculars so that I could stargaze, which hooked me in even more. My high school career continued, got into college, decided to go to Yale. I get to Yale, super excited. I'm going to take my first astronomy class ever. I'm actually going to get a grade for this. Yay. Um, however, my advisor was like, Maritza, you're taking the wrong class. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. I said, what do you mean this is not what I'm supposed to be doing? It's astronomy, right? No, you're supposed to take physics for scientists and engineers. As you can imagine, I was not very happy to hear that. <laughs> physics was not my friend, for sure. Um, and so I, three classes into the semester, I went to physics class. Did not go well. I had missed vectors. I had missed motion. I had missed part of forces. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I in for? I do not know what I'm doing. Failed the first test. Had to drop the class. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? My first attempt. But you know what? I didn't give up. I said, I know astronomy's for me. I have so many people who believe in me. I know astronomy is for me. So I decided, OK, I'm going to come up with a plan to make up those classes that you know, I missed that first year. And I'm going to go talk to my department chair. 
And my department chair, I'm sure after he hears my plan of preparedness and that I'm going to take advantage of my semester off at school, he's going to say, that sounds great, Maritza. Go for it. We'll be waiting for you when you get back. Um, told him my plan. He's like, no. No, you cannot take another elementary physics class to replace the class you would have taken here. That's not acceptable here. Two, he said, you know, if you're having so much trouble now, what makes you think you can succeed later? That was very hard to hear. But you know, you know what the true tragedy was? That I believed him. I let his perception of me become my truth. Boy, took my semester off, came back, and I said, OK, I need a plan B. Well, you know what? I'm going to major in political science, something that has nothing to do with science, well, kind of science, but nothing to do with the natural sciences. I'm going to major in political science. And you know, I learned about Latin American governments. I learned about Cuba, Fidel Castro, things like that, directly associated with my background. However, I wasn't happy, really. I was just going through the motions. And this had disastrous effects for me my last semester. I failed. I failed two classes. And I thought, oh my god. Here I have this amazing opportunity, and I failed. And I let my mother down. Because when I was telling my mother about astronomy, she's like, are you crazy? You should be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. Those things pay the bills. And I was like, no, astronomy, that's where it's at. And she said, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, do not waste your education. Because that's all I can leave to you. That's my gift to you. And here I am. No Yale degree. No possibility for a future for me. That was hard. A few weeks later, I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this stop me. I picked myself up and said, OK, you know what? I'm going to go back to plan A. That's where my heart is at. That's where my passion is at. I could start in the beginning. There's no rule written anywhere that I have to you know, acknowledge that and, and stay in the past. I can move forward. So I went back to school and tackled physics head on. This is where I learned that famous givens, find, use, Anybody who's been in my class knows all about that. Um, and I did it. I did it. I'd have to say I did about 90% of all the questions in my textbook. Because I said, you know what? Physics is not going to win. I am. Did very well. So well, in fact, in my community college that I had a senior college come up to me and say, Maritza, we want you at our school. You are a diamond in the rough. We want to make you shine. They accepted me, paid me to do research. And in that environment, I was able to get my bachelor's and master's in physics in a relatively short amount of time. In the middle of that, I was able to engage in some amazing experiences. National Science Foundation has this wonderful program, Research Experience for Undergraduates. I was able to spend a summer on Nantucket learning about astronomy and doing research, writing a paper. I was able, the following spring, to spend two and a half months in Chile at Cerro Tololo International Observatory and do astronomy in the southern hemisphere, looking at that beautiful night sky. 
That summer, my paper got published. I was like, wow, you know what? I haven't even gone to grad school and I have a paper. I've made it. <laughs> um, went back, you know, finished my coursework, et cetera, and off to grad school. University of Michigan was where I made my home. Go blue. And um, there, I was able to take part in various research projects. But also, I was able to work at one of the NASA sites. I was able to work at NASA Goddard. They, as a group of student interns, they were able to fly us down to Cape Canaveral and I watched a shuttle launch. Incredible. I, you know, had my projects settled on my dissertation, dark matter halo properties of nearby galaxies. These are my galaxies. In fact, these are my images. These are the ones that I took at the telescope over 25 nights. And essentially, what I did for my dissertation was this. I took these galaxies, looked at their light distribution. That tells me how many stars there are. And I can figure out the mass. Then I used radio telescopes. The radio telescopes tell me how much gas is in these galaxies. And by looking at how these galaxies move, I can figure out, well, how much mass should be there? And if I take away all those other components I talked about before, the rest has got to be dark matter. And how that dark matter is distributed tells us something about the universe, the early universe out of which all these galaxies formed. That was my dissertation. Wonderful experience. Now I come to the point where I'm ready to move to the next phase in my career. Almost done with my doctorate, I'm looking for jobs. I line a great job up at Berkeley as a postdoctoral researcher, and I'm ready to commit. However, during my time in graduate school, I've gotten married. I've had my daughter. And family is important to me. So now I've come to another place, another situation in my life where I have to choose. But this choice is not a sm small choice. It's not like, OK, where do I go to school? Do I you know, take this class or that class? This is a monumental choice. Family? or career. After having, you know, my daughter, having her fall asleep in my arms, I knew the choice that I had to make. I picked my family. And then I realized, wow, now I have to reinvent myself. I have to find another path. I have all these skills. I have so much to share, except now I won't be sharing it behind a computer screen. I had taught at my old high school. Um, I taught chemistry for a year, and I thought, well, maybe teaching is it. Maybe teaching is the way to go. So, um, very tail end of my uh, graduate career, an email comes to my inbox. Forest Ridge is looking for a physics teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that was in 2005, and I've been here ever since. Thank you. What I want to stress, what I'm hoping that you take away from this, is that you can always redefine yourself. You can always find a new passion. My new passion is sharing with young women the, you know, 
about the natural sciences. And it's not just about teaching. It's not just about the frost learning about driving the roads. Or, you know, my older students learning how to write a lab report. It is much more than that. I want you to know that even though the road is bumpy for you, even, the road, even though you may, you may encounter failure, even though there are obstacles, there's always a way to overcome them. You just have to be innovative. You have to redefine. You have to be open to that. Because let me tell you one thing. Even though I didn't take the most direct route to astronomy, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. especially the experience that I have as an educator. Thank you.